morning. I am Isabella, church warden and St. Mary Magdalene with St. Martin's Addiscombe. Welcome to our YouTube channel and a special welcome to all those who are visiting this channel for the first time. As we worship together now, you are welcome to join in with Holy Communion as you would like, using it as a time of reflection. We will have time at that point in the service to listen to a song and think about the deep meaning of Jesus' body and blood given for us. At the end of this service, you are welcome to join the St. Mary Magdalene with St. Martin's Zoom Room for coffee and chat. So make yourself a cup and grab some Easter egg and come and see how everyone is doing. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, there is a need for supplies via our local food bank. Our website gives details of what is needed. Food and hygiene items can be dropped off at St Mildred's. If any of our church family are in need of shopping, prescription pickup, etc., please don't hesitate to get in touch via our webpage, which has contact details. Jen Welby will put you in touch with someone to help. We wish you a happy Easter. Now, enjoy our Easter Sunday service. Good morning and welcome to our 10 o'clock Easter Sunday morning service. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. and Frank's garden and normally if we were together in our church building we would be going to the font wouldn't we where Sancha would have set up an Easter garden for us so we can remember how Jesus died he was crucified and buried in a tomb in a cave and then on Easter morning he rose again let's go over to see what Sancha has for us in her garden When I was a child, I always used to make an Easter garden on Good Friday. 
I used to go in search of moss and wild flowers and little rocks and stones and small sticks. More recently, I've been making the Easter garden at St Mary Magdalene with St Martin. But this year, I have made one in my own garden. Here are the three crosses. The one in the center is where Jesus hung and suffered for our sins. The ones on either side were occupied by the two criminals. After Jesus died on Good Friday, Joseph of Arimathea asked for his body which he took and wrapped in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, a cave that he had cut out of the rock. When this was done, a large stone was then pulled across the entrance. But today, as Mary found, the stone has been moved and Jesus' body is no longer there. Only the shroud is left. For today is Easter, Jesus has risen. He is alive. Alleluia. Alleluia. We're now going to go and see Val. And Val has prepared a theme for us on Easter for you to think about based on her boiled eggs. Thank you, Val. Good morning and a very happy Easter to you all. Today we celebrate Jesus being alive. Easter is the time of new life. In our spring gardens, we see new life in our flowers and trees. Often, we give Easter eggs as a symbol of new life. The new life of Easter is very exciting. When Mary Magdalene and several other women went to the tomb with their spices, they found that the tomb had already been opened. They went in and expected to find Jesus' body. Suddenly, two angels in bright white clothes appeared and said, Jesus is not here. He has risen. The message of Easter is that Jesus is always with us, giving us the hope of new beginnings. Here is a way that we can demonstrate the resurrection. Take a hard-boiled egg and dye it or paint it red. This represents the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of sin. The hard shell represents the sealed tomb where Christ was buried. The breaking of the egg represents Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And a prayer. We thank you, Father God, that you raised your son Jesus from death and that his life means that we too can live with him forevermore. We pray for those who have not yet discovered that Jesus is alive today and we pray that they will know the evidence of the empty tomb and meet with him. Amen. Amen. We come now to our confession where we know we can say sorry to God for everything that we have done which we know is wrong and for the things that we should have done that we haven't done, we can ask for his forgiveness, which he gives freely through the sacrifice, the love of Jesus Christ. Let's take a moment of quiet. You will have been sent these words by Val earlier on this week so we can join in together, but a moment of quiet. And we pray, Jesus Christ, you are risen from the dead. We are sorry that we have done things that are wrong. We are sorry that we have not asked for your help. Father, forgive us and change us. We are sorry for the bad thoughts we have had. Father, forgive us and heal us. We are sorry when we have wanted the things that other people have got. We are sorry for being tempted. Father, forgive us and help us.
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the special prayer for Easter Sunday, the Collect. Lord of life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. We're going to sing our, our next song, The Price is Paid. this morning from the Gospel of Matthew and Isabella will lead us in this reading. The New Testament reading is taken from the book of Matthew, reading chapter 28. The Resurrection of Jesus. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. 
he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and with great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said greetings, and they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Report of the Guard while they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, you must say, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still told among the Jews to this day. Commissioning of the Disciples Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, Isabella. It's wonderful that we can be connected, isn't it, through the, the use of media these days. And I'm really pleased to be able to say that Brian is now going to preach our Easter morning service from his home. Good Thank morning. You, Brian. And may I wish you a very happy Easter. Not because of the circumstances that we're currently facing, but because we know, despite our situation, the joy that Jesus is alive today touches our hearts. Well, here we are. Matthew tells us about the first Easter Sunday morning. The women can't keep away from the garden tomb. They want to complete the embalming of Jesus' body, started in haste on Friday evening before the Sabbath. Perhaps in their optimism, they hoped the soldiers might help them. But what they saw terrified them. And the soldiers were so shocked with fear at the event that they were in a faint. And in fact, fear is the prevailing emotion that is talked about in this chapter. Everyone in Matthew's shortened retelling of events is either afraid or reassured in their fear. So we're going to look at the various ch characters in this chapter and their fears this morning. And then we'll ask if their fears echo any of our own. Let's look first at the soldiers. Why on earth were they there? They probably didn't have any idea to stop people going in. Who on earth steals a body from a tomb when you've got to move a boulder that weighs a tonne and a half uphill? Or are they there to stop someone getting out? Guarding the dead must have been an eerie assignment and perhaps a bit of a dos too. But they got the shock of their lives. They collapsed as God intervened. These soldiers who dealt with death almost on a daily basis couldn't cope with life that conquered death. 
The guards were so afraid of him, they shook and became like dead men, we read. But they now face another fear. What on earth do we do now? They hadn't left their posts, but the dead man's body had escaped. Dereliction of duty meant execution to a Roman soldier. Maybe because these were under Jewish authority, they'd escape. But they're certainly afraid on several levels. But then there's the chief priests and the authorities, people who held the reins on every area of Jewish life. If Jesus was released from the death that they'd condemned him to and started teaching again, they'd be destroyed. The king of the Jews would take their thrones. Jesus would destroy their castles, built so carefully on the sands of tradition and earthly power. Of course, Jesus could rebuild them on a rock. He could give them new life, life not their own, if they'd just come to him. But they couldn't even look at that one. Then there were the women, vulnerable, loving, caring and wanting to serve Jesus. They show more guts than the 11 male disciples huddled in the upper room for fear of the authorities. But they were afraid. God's messenger assures them that they don't have to be afraid. Not of God's intervention, nor of death, nor of new life. The angelic messenger said, don't be afraid. He's not here. He's risen. Tell the others he is risen from the dead. The women were, of course, still afraid, bewildered, but filled with joy too. Then they met Jesus himself and again he tells them not to be afraid. The joy they have is magnified and his perfect and undefeated love casts out their fear. Then, finally, we look at the disciples. Matthew leapfrogs several weeks and tells of their new mission. Can you imagine the fear they may have felt when they thought about that? Going out into all the world? They'd been on mission before, of course, to their own people. But going into all the world? Making disciples of all nations? Romans? Greeks? Spanish? Brits? These God-forsaken Gentiles, well, they're different, different culture, with no Old Testament background to build on. Everything about them was different. These disciples were sent with a message that most people will hate and reject, and their fear of that rejection must have been high. That's why Jesus reminds them that he has all authority in heaven and on earth. Jesus gives them his passport protection as they cross boundaries. He says, first, as my followers, you're under my authority. So go and do this. But secondly, he says, I'm sending you under the protection of my authority with a passport message that if you're attacked, it's an attack on me. A British passport carries weight. It's backed by Her Majesty's government wherever you go. So does Jesus' passport. But Jesus also says, you go with my authority to do a job. The world is under my authority and I'm sending you in my name to change it for the better. I wonder... Is our belief in Jesus' resurrection just an academic idea or something that blows the fresh wind of the spirit of life through our musty lives, through our thoughts and imaginations, motivating us to take new steps for him? Tom Wright says, there's no point defending and explaining God's new world if you're still living in the old one yourself. So, do any of these experiences find echoes in our own fears? I've no doubt fears of COVID-19 and the lockdown nor at our peace 
and sometimes take our sleep away. Perhaps you are fearful for yourself or for others who are close to you. Maybe you have fears about your work right now, not only now, but when this is all over immediately. And perhaps afraid of illness, even death itself. Or perhaps we're afraid that our castle, like the chief priests, might fall. Or that I've so carefully created and nurtured, the ideas I've built my life on for decades could all come crumbling down. Jesus threatens to destroy it all, offering something so different I can scarcely take it in. One guy I know says that Jesus wrecked his life. I know what he meant. Yes, our plans may lie in ashes when we surrender to him. But he always builds new ones, new plans, new futures in love. Maybe we are actually afraid of God's resurrection intervention in our own lives. Like the guards were afraid of the supernatural, afraid of something out of this world. Is this something that perhaps I can't cope with? But well, here's the astonishing news. God does sometimes work, intervene in astonishing and unusual ways. But it will always be in love. Perhaps I'm afraid of sharing this great news about Jesus with others. Maybe he's calling me into places I might not want to go or do things that seem too big perhaps into service, into training, going beyond our comfort zone with the glorious new life of Jesus that speaks hope into the present need. Maybe we're afraid of his call to love the unlovable, serve the independent and bring light into darkness. Does any of this make us feel afraid? And to us, he says, do not be afraid. All authority is given to me, the King of the Jews, the King of all things. Go into in my name and in my authority and see what I will do through you. If Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, as we so enthusiastically remind ourselves at Christmas, then he's also Emmanuel, God with us at Easter. He has never become God was with us or God has been with us. He is and always will be Emmanuel, God with us, now and forever. God has the title Yahweh, meaning I am that I am. Always the same, faithful, the consistent one. The same last month before COVID-19 hit us, when we walked with him in the light, today while he holds us, and forever, however long and dark that journey may be. So his love, a love that can never die, a love that encompasses all who come to him, his perfect love, casts out our fear. May God bless us, with his joy and his, his peace this Easter time. Amen. Amen. Let's affirm our shared faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, risen today, as we say the Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Chris and Jenny Rutter are now going to lead us in our intercessions. On this Easter morning, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, let us rejoice that the risen Lord Jesus is with us, our constant companion. Jesus, Jesus is, is alive. alive. He, he has, has risen. risen. With the dawn of another day comes hope, opportunity and new beginnings. The tomb is empty. Our Easter faith begins. Jesus, Jesus is alive. He, he has, has risen. risen. We rejoice in the knowledge that Christ has overcome death, transformed darkness into light, and leads us forward into newness of life. Jesus, Jesus is alive. He has risen. Alleluia. All praise to you, our risen Lord. May the same power that created Jesus Christ from the dead be at work in our lives and our churches today. Thank you for saving us. Jesus is alive. He has risen. Father God, we confess our own shortcomings. Forgive our apathy and our selfishness. The words of love we fail to speak and the words of criticism we speak too readily. Direct our lives so that we may look to the good of others in word and deed. And with this in mind, we uphold before you, Lord, the community around us. We pray for children and young people, for families, for those who live alone, for the elderly and vulnerable, especially at this time of isolation and deprivation of liberty. Help us to help those who cannot help themselves, to be good neighbours to one another and to be compassionate in their needs as you showed us through the life and works of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray for our world. May your unifying love draw nations together, helping them to find shared interests to build on. May your will be accomplished through all world leaders, governments and their advisers. Help them to lead their peoples wisely and fairly with understanding and sensitivity. And may our own government be guided to protect and serve all our citizens throughout the country in making the difficult decisions to bring us through this present crisis in safety and security. Amen. Amen. Loving Father, help us to support and care for one another as members of one family in Christ. We pray for all unwell at this time, especially those affected by the coronavirus epidemic and for those who are worried about the future. We pray particularly for our Prime Minister. Bless all those in the NHS caring for the sick and the dying, that they may be strengthened and protected and filled with your peace. We also ask you to bless all those who have given their time in volunteering and all who are working to keep essential services running at great personal risk to themselves. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close. Be especially close to them, that they may know the comforting power of the resurrection of Jesus. Teach us to be your faithful people in this time of global crisis. 
help us to follow in the footsteps of our faithful shepherd, Jesus, who laid down his life for the sake of love. Glorify his name as you equip us with everything needed for doing your will, and we pray that you will grant each of us your peace today and always. Amen. Amen. We come now to the peace. When Jesus came and stood amongst his disciples, he said to them, Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Amen. If you have somebody at home with you now, exchange the peace with them. And now we're going to sing our next Easter song, He is Risen.
the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread. He gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, Taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. We pray together now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Amen. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Thank you. 
we say together a prayer of thanksgiving after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We're going to sing now our closing hymn for this wonderful Easter morning service of praise and worship. We're going to sing Thine be the glory. church and I'm really sorry we can't do that today. I just wonder if maybe your parents have hidden a little Easter egg somewhere or maybe several and you can do your own Easter egg hunt after the blessing. It's been wonderful to be together uh, one way or another just in this moment of time worshipping God on this Easter morning and in a moment you'll be able to go into the Zoom room and we'll be able to have coffee together. So before the Easter egg hunt and before our coffee time we come to our blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.